Hi everybody, it's Cheryl with Silver Sage Studio and today I'm going to be making a sympathy card using a flower silhouette stamp set in twinkling H2O watercolors. I like to keep sympathy cards on hand. I also like to keep them fairly simple in their design. I'm going to start by showing you the products I'm using. This is Canson 140 watercolor paper cut down to A2 size. I'm also going to use some brushes. They're not necessarily watercolor brushes, but they work just fine. I keep two tubs of water nearby when I'm using watercolors, one to clean my brush and one for the product itself. These are my watercolors I'll be using. They're called Twinkling H2Os. I keep them in this box that a friend of mine gave me, and I'm just showing you here that I have quite a few colors. I really love these um, watercolors. This is the swatch that I made. I think that's important to do. You can see here that there's a little bit of glimmer in these from mica powder, um, but it is really important to swatch out your watercolors because they can often look different in the pan than they do on the paper. These are the colors, Mediterranean, alf Sweet Alfalfa, Sunburst, and Mustard Green. Those are the colors I'll be using on the card today. This is a stamp set I'll be using. It's from Technique Tuesday. It's no longer available, but I do link to some very comparable stamp sets. I love this because it's not only a silhouette, but the stamps themselves are fairly large for um, stamps, so they can really cover up a nice portion of the card. This sentiment stamp set from Paper Trink is no longer available, but I will link to something that has some nice sympathy messages in it. I'm using Ranger embossing powder, twine from Paper Tray Ink, some Versamark, just a spray bottle, and a corner rounder. Of course, I'm gonna be using my ATG adhesive runner, and as always, my Misty Stamper. The watercolor paper that I'll be using is Canson 140 pound 11 by 15 inch. And if you cut this the right way, you can get six E2 card sizes. So what I do is cut four and a quarter inch strips along the lengthwise portion of the paper. And then if you cut that in half, it cuts to five and a half. I've taped down the watercolor paper here to keep it from buckling too much. And now I'm using a squirt bottle to just wet those tubs of watercolor paint. I'm starting by wetting the watercolor paper. This will keep the color soft and will allow them to blend. This isn't a super technical process here. I'm just going to be putting down the watercolor paint blending those colors together. I'll go over it a couple of different times just to give a little bit more pigmentation on the paper. You've got to remember um, that watercolor paper or watercolors will dry lighter than they look when they're wet. So if you always keep that in mind, that helps. If you really want nice bold colors, a good thing to do is once your watercolors are dry, to go back over it a second time when they're dry. I'm going over it a second time while it's still wet, which will give me a little bit more pigmentation, a little bit more color on the paper. But I don't want something super bold here. I'm going for a soft background. You can see there I was trying to decide if I was done or not, but I want that bottom portion blended just a little bit more. Seems like the top half is quite a bit darker than the bottom, so I'm going to try to balance that out a little bit here. I don't mind the streaks here. I'm not going for a perfectly smooth look here. I think the texture of that image is good because it almost looks like a sky. I let this dry overnight, and now I'm removing the washi tape from the edges. You wanna do this fairly slowly and at an angle, because if you're not careful, you can pull up some of the paper and mess up the watercoloring that you've done. It stays pretty flat if you tape it and you haven't put too much water on it, which is going to help me when I'm adhering this down later. Using the paper trimmer, I am trimming off a quarter inch. 
I'm doing this upside down because it does curve just a little bit from having been wet and doing it upside down allows me to see better where I'm lining that up with the line. For cards like this, I want a nice soft look to it and rounding corners can do that for you. So I rounded my corners here. And now it's time to stamp the flowers on there. If you're going to be using cling stamps, you need to remove that foam pad that's in your Misty. Cling stamps are just deeper than clear stamps. I'm using the grid to help me line that up, make sure that it's straight. Using my anti-static tool to make sure that I don't get little bits of black embossing powder where I don't want it. That's the problem with black embossing powders. It can really show if you get it in places that you don't want it. But I find if you use that anti-static tool and just keep a fine paintbrush on hand, it can help you clean anything up that you need to clean up. So you can see there I have a couple spots where I have embossing powder that I don't want. So I'm just going to brush that off. There's a couple more spots that I need to clean up and I'm going to do that right now with my brush again. And then of course, since this is heat embossing powder, I'm going to heat that up and emboss it. I really like this Ranger Fine Embossing Powder. It's really great for detail. Now that I've embossed the flowers, I'm going to do the same thing with the sentiment. I am really disappointed that this sentiment stamp set is no longer available from Paper Tray Ink. It has almost any situation you can imagine, but I will link to something that has some great sympathy sentiments in it. I've actually got my sentiment here on upside down and it's going to take me a minute to figure it out. I'm even straightening it while it's upside down. And then it finally occurs to me what's happening and I straighten it there. Thank goodness I didn't stamp it upside down. I'm using the twine here just to kind of get a feel for where things are and if it's where I want it. I'm going to go ahead and emboss that sentiment in the same black embossing powder that I used earlier. I'm going to clean it up with a brush before I hit it with the heat tool. And now it's time to put the twine on. I love this twine from Paper Tray Ink. It's very versatile. I'm measuring it out here to make sure I cut a large enough piece. I want it to go around the card three times. I'm going to wrap it around the card so that it goes around three times and then I'm going to tie it in a knot and then I'm going to wrap those ends around the three strands going around the card again and tie another knot so that I can fan them out. Something that helps me here are reverse tweezers and a lot of crafters have reverse tweezers but if you don't these are the opposite in the sense that when you squeeze them is when they open and when you're not squeezing them is when they're pinching at the end so you can actually as you see here I'm putting it on and then letting go and it's holding its pinch really great tool and now I'm wrapping it around those three strands and tying another knot sorry I did that off screen there but I kind of fanned out those three strings a little bit there at this point I decide that I'm not happy that some of those flowers are a little bit blotchy using the Versamark pen I'm just kind of coloring in those spots to fill them in with the black embossing powder again cleaning up with a paintbrush and I'm going to hit that with the heat tool to fill in those gaps so that my flowers are solid. The cardstock I'm using as my base is Nina 100 pound desert storm cardstock. I think they're changing the name to environment. Here I'm rounding the corner so that it works with my rounded corners on the image itself. And when I'm adhering watercolor paper down, when I've used any kind of wet medium, I put a lot of adhesive down onto the watercolor paper. 
Watercolor paper can be difficult to glue down for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's very textured. And number two, because if you've put too, or if you've put wet medium on it, it will buckle and curve, and it doesn't always want to lay flat. This one's not so bad; it's fairly flat. Here I'm using the grid on my background on my table here to just help me line this up so I can make sure that I'm putting it on with a quarter inch all the way around the edges, and pushing down to make sure it adheres. Here's the final card. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you found some inspiration here. And if you liked this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.